All right, this week in our continuing coverage of AI, um, this is an interesting one. Uh, Dinson's got a little sniffle action going. Mm -hmm. And um, unfortunately, that kind of timed out with another article uh, that I came across this week. And this is about chat GPT giving better medical advice than doctors. Which sounds crazy to say. Um, I think there's a number of ways you could look at that, right? Is it just more well delivered doctors? That's easier for me to accept, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. In my experience using Chat GPT in that manner, and looking at um, looking looking at WebMD, right? Mm -hmm. uh, doctors' advice falls somewhere in between, but um, so I could see that being a benefit. But for them to just flat out say that their medical advice is better than doctors, do they mean it's more accurate, it's more beneficial to your health? Mm -hmm. If so, and that's what we're going to find out. But if so, that sounds mind-blowing to me, you know? Yeah, it does. It sounds insane. But, you know, it's... I, I can see it. I can I can see it for for uh, people to especially to turn to it easily. Um, it's so accessible in general, and so if the advice sounds plausible enough, you know, of course people are gonna uh, jump to it as well as um, if it works for them, right? Um, that's that's surprising. But I mean, at the same time too, it's also combing through like a lot of data. So, yeah. Well, also, ChatGPT is very quick to say, uh, please refer to a medical professional for advice, you know, or, or I cannot give official medical advice or diagnosis, you know, those uh, things along those lines. Um, but for an actual, <coughs> excuse me, study to show um, that's more effective, that's really amazing it's just yet another thing that the world of ai could transform uh and there's a number of ways including online medicine um which is really something i had not thought about that's a really interesting idea um but could it be that you could use chat gpt and get a better medical idea of what's going on with you i think going to your general practitioner it sounds risky to say i don't want yep. you to take anything i say about it as medical advice, uh, but we're going to dive into what this study shows. So let's go ahead and get into it. Before we jump into our topic, I want to remind you all of the three. Well, we want to. It's a team effort over here on the Catch Up Podcast. Remind you of the three best ways to support this show. Number one, give it to them. Oh, <laughs> I took a his earbud for that. Okay. Uh, number one is leave us a rate and review wherever you're listening, wherever you're watching, there is a way to review and rate. Uh, even if you're on the Facebook live stream, it really helps us out on every platform to be shared with more potential listeners as we get positive ratings. It helps us to know what we're doing well and could improve on. Number two. <laughs> there they are. Yep. I was about to say that one was quick because he couldn't hear it. Single word I was saying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> number two, uh, jump on the live stream with us if you're listening on the audio platform. We go live every Thursday night on Facebook and on YouTube. Uh, and you can jump in the conversation with us in real time. The chat is open and we want your opinions as we live stream slash record these episodes. And number three, this is always the most impressive one. Wow. Yeah, that's that was well done. Um, the balance is impeccable. Number three, uh, if you want to support us monetarily, check out our shop. It is all linked down below every single bit of what I just talked about. In our link tree, you will see the link wherever you're listening, wherever you're watching, uh, and it will go a long way to help us. If you want to support us, did I cut myself off on this? If you want to support us monetarily, we have a merch shop where we have some really cool merch and apparel. I just went down the road of the link tree. For some reason, I was more excited <laughs> Um, we got shirts, we have beanies, we have hats, phone cases, mugs. We got some cool stuff. So check it out. It'll really go a long way to help us continue to grow. Mm -hmm. So with that said, all right, here's why I got in this study. Okay. Um, first of all, 
uh, this was done at uh, University of California, San Diego, conducted a study comparing the quality and empathy of medical advice provided by chat GPT and real doctors. So the empathy side of this is what we were talking about, right? Um, mm-hmm. Something I can attest to uh, just in testing it in that way. Um, you know, like, oh, I uh, got allergies killing me, you know. Uh, tested it to see what it was capable of. Yep, sure enough. Uh, it it felt better. I'm not going to say that a doctor, but compared to um, WebMD, for sure, or any, any, seemingly any website resource for that. Mm-hmm. Um, but they conducted a study comparing the quality and empathy of medical advice provided by ChatGPT and real doctors using a random sample of nearly 200 medical questions. Uh, from reddit okay so that's an interesting Mm -hmm. thing um i really want to know um what your thought is on sampling that from reddit you i think you know reddit better than i do um so that's a genuine question i don't know is that a good sample source for something like this (laughs) um i'll say that uh sometimes it's a okay sample source it just kind of depends on what part of reddit that you sampled from (laughs) um uh there's a lot of know-it-alls on reddit uh but there's also a lot of trolls so um you know you just got to parse through that data properly but i think it can be a good source that's fair i think reddit you know it was it was founded on just being a what uh what a thread uh what do they call that man I mean, it has threads in it, right? But um, I'm talking like, yeah, I never remember the phrase for this. It's like early 2000s internet was made up of this kind of stuff. Um, uh, with like chat chat rooms or whatever. Yeah, or, not that. Um, forums. Forums. There you go. Yeah, it was it was basically a forum for any topic, um, you know. Mm-hmm. And so there are genuine conversations on there, in addition to all of the conspiracy theories and jokes and memes and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, so, okay. So we got that. Here are the results. So chat GPT outperformed real doctors in 80% of the cases being four times more likely to provide a higher quality response and 10 times more likely to provide a more empathetic response. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. So what would you without having the answers in front of us. What would you assume that uh, the reason is for the higher quality responses? My assumption is, well, actually, you know what? You you take it. Go ahead and take it. No, no, no. Go ahead. You got it. Well, my assumption is uh, doctors often provide an abridged um, answer or description of whatever a next step is or uh, to your question. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just because they're in a hurry. Sometimes they think maybe, you know, you don't want that deep of an answer. And other times maybe they're doing it for your protection. So you don't feel overwhelmed uh, by a treatment process or something like that, you know, Mm -hmm. but um, regardless of that, I think that that is what would make a higher quality answer is it's more detailed. Yeah. Yeah. No, I could see that. I could see that. Um, I was also thinking that it could be too that just the data data set, right? Um, You're of course, technically both chat GPT and doctors have the same data set, but it's the way that, um, it's going to be accessing that information, right? Because, you know, from, uh, from a doctor, right. Uh, a lot of it is more experience based with a touch of, um, like empirical evidence or whatever like that, sure. um, where, uh, chat GPT would be pulling from like a really, I would say maybe in some ways more robust, um, uh, 50 50 data set so it'll have you know actual studies right it'll put it'll put in actual studies in that search it'll have 
uh, and then it'll also have like actual user experiences and all other stuff like that and makes it so and then you know essentially grabs all that information parses through it and says okay so this is probably the most accurate diagnosis off of the sy symptoms or questions that you've given me um, that it's just a little bit harder for humans to grab um, and kind of also going to your point right we're also going to do an abridged version of it right um, I always like to tell people that um, you know doctors are essentially the IT people for people so um, uh, for our bodies so it's yeah. you know it's you you go off of like eh, i've seen this kind of and so it should probably be this but you're not going to give you never want to give a very super confident like this is profoundly what it is blah 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 because you don't know right you've seen this yeah. error or you've seen this happen for this person um on one occasion but different persons are different different beasts they could have similar symptoms but it's not exactly the perfect so they're not going to give you the most detailed they're going to give you a bridge one that feels okay but may not be fully true right so uh where chat gd chat gpt what we have seen especially a lot of times is that it's just confident in in everything mm -hmm. that it does it could be confident confidently wrong but it's going to be yeah. like hey this is it <laughs> so I can also see it that way too. Yeah, it certainly has made improvements to not be wrong or at least let you know if it doesn't know an answer, you know, yeah. um, which is good. But um, yeah, I think to your point, it's kind of like if you get asked a history question, right? And you know the answer, but you don't know why you know the answer you just know you learned it in history school right it's kind of like the mm -hmm. same thing for a doctor and they're gonna say well this is this and blah blah but they're not gonna have the, <clears throat> the surrounding information to help benefit you in that moment chat gpt pulls that instantly yep. right so um let's talk about the empathy side a little bit more uh so AI systems like ChatGPT can make empathetic language, right? Um, and the article cited doctors are constrained for time and resources as to why they can't be as empathetic. Mm -hmm. I get that to an extent, but like the human condition is still the human condition at the end of the day, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like that's a more complex one. Uh, and granted, in my mind, especially when we started off this conversation, I was comparing this to uh, online sources like WebMD more than I was doctors. So that's more simple explanation. That's wording that makes it a lot more tolerable and understandable. Why do you think that ChatGPT is able to deliver medical news better than a doctor is? Yeah, that's a um actually okay, hold on. I think I may have something. I was just thinking about it. <laughs> well, yeah, no, go ahead. Um could it be because part of this stipulation when asking Chad GPT for medical advice is it said is it delivers it with the stipulation that it's not a doctor, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it can't give official medical advice. Mm -hmm. So therefore that makes him a softer delivery anyway, right? Yeah, I could see that. I could see that because there it, it creates that that hint of doubt, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you know, this is probably uh, what it is, and but I'm not a medical professional, so I don't know, right? So it's going to throw right. that out there. It's mm -hmm. kind of like... Um, it's kind of like, you know, when you're giving your friends therapy advice, but you're like, I'm not licensed. I'm not a licensed professional. <laughs> um, so um, I'm not licensed, but this is professional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Just a little inside joke for you guys. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I could easily see it being that way. Yeah. it That ends up becoming a, a much softer um like you said, landing um, than what you would normally get. Sure. Yeah. No, I completely agree with that. And uh, the article also talks about 
length of responses too. I think this goes back to the um, details, you know, being greater than what a doctor typically provides. It says in the study, uh, AI responses were almost double the length of physician responses, which could have contributed to the higher scores for quality and empathy. Longer responses from doctors may not be sustainable due to time constraints. You know, I... I feel like I, I don't know, man. When you know, we've all been in doctors' offices where we end up having conversations where they're like, "Hey, what you doing this weekend?" Blah blah, and they they spark up like a five minute conversation off of that. Yep. And I appreciate that because it's to try and foster that connection and, and lower the stress. Yep. More. I would give that up almost all the time for a more thorough discussion on my health, right? Yeah. And so therefore, for time constraints to be an excuse, at least in my experience, I'm not sure I can always agree with that. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I could see that. I could see that. Um, yeah, because, yeah, I, I, yeah, especially if it's something that really concerns me, I really want to just get the skinny. Like, like, give me, tell me, tell me what's happening. Like, what, what's up? What's up? You know, what do you see? Um, I don't like to do to, you know, beat around the bush for a long time when it's something that's already concerning, right? I'm already feeling concerned. I want to be, I want to know exactly how concerned I need to be, right? It's at least I know there's a plan, right? That's the thing. That's really Mm -hmm. what you want. And I can see where chat GPT is going to give you that. Bam, this is it. Gives you that feeling of like, okay, cool. Now I know. Yeah. I'm done. Yeah. And if you're one of those people, too, that gets nervous about medical diagnosis or medical advice, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, ChatGPT, just as you can do it with any topic, we've done this before, right? We did it with, like, quantum physics discussions. You can change the voice with which uh, ChatGPT delivers its answers. Yep. You know, so you could be like... Give this to me like a motivational speaker. I don't know. Just something like that. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's an ad benefit too. Obviously not contained in this study, but I do think that that's an addition worth uh, worth mentioning. Mm-hmm. So check this out. Um, potential applications. So this study also looked into um, using AI in medical care, uh, working with physicians alongside to provide that medical care, right? So it could help uh, address the growing backlog of patients' questions and improve the overall patient experience in healthcare. So this is a growing thing um, that I've seen as well, uh, that a lot of, a lot of places are having allowed that online patient portal. Mm-hmm. And you can log into it at any time and leave a question, right? And it's on that physician's to-do list to answer those questions, right? Mm-hmm. So imagine, I don't know, imagine you're seeing 15 patients a day, right? But you mm-hmm. also have to answer the questions of 30 more, 40 more, you yeah. know? Probably an exorbitant number, even if you said 10 or 20 more, though. That's, that's a packed a day. Yeah. That's a packed day. And so if you could have an AI, and I don't think you could just dump chat GPT in there. I think that'd be risky, you know. But I think if you could have chat or, or an AI chatbot that was developed and specifically trained on, you know, <laughs> honestly eight de- eight years of medical school <laughs> mm-hmm. um which is kind of scary to think about but if you could do that you could safely have an ai chatbot there to deliver instantaneous uh, responses and for anything that needs a more complex answer right? help set up a phone or in-person appointment for that you know yeah yeah i think that's i think i would yeah i think that would be really good um also, you know, I, I something else that I, I thought of, too, when you were talking about this is that, you know, people get that more directed um, 
answer from chat gpt but they can also get kind of in some ways an unbiased opinion because i feel like that sometimes i feel like sometimes that's what a lot of people have or are scared of when they go to the doctor right and so they become reluctant to tell them their symptoms or what actually is going on where i feel like with chat gpt it feels kind of like a anonymous third party right mm -hmm. that you can tell anything that you want to and they won't judge you uh for anything uh and so i think I, that would be another great uh example or another great way for people to kind of like feel more relieved about any answers that they get from chat gpt as well as just more real willing to give up more information so even if yeah. you use chat gpt uh in your scenario right but more on the lines of collecting information, right? So just saying, like asking certain questions, people are going to feel more or less judged because it's this AI chatbot that's doing it instead of, you know, Dr. Dr. Jones down the street. Yeah. That's a great point. I mean, if, if we still lived in the times, I, I'm, I know some places probably still do. But, you know, uh, you bash your knee um, in, like, a football game or dirt biking accident, something like that. Mm -hmm. And the local town doctor says, oh, we'll just wrap it, put a plank of wood next to it to keep it straight, and it'll heal over time, right? Mm -hmm. You go to chat GPT and you say, what's the best way to treat this? This would pull from actual medical documentation to tell you what's the best way to treat that and say that that probably would result in permanent damage to your knee or, you know, mm -hmm. um, it, for the lower likelihood of it properly healing. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, things like that, I think you're right. Um, it would lower that bias. It would lower that bias without a doubt. Yeah. Um, you know, whether it's, medical um treatments or really any top bbc able to pull uh documentation from studies trials um tests you know like like crash tests right like if you're thinking about buying a used car is chat gpt doesn't have data after september 2021 and you wanted to know what the crash uh, test was on that, you could look it up and it could say five car or five star crash uh, safety test, but you could actually ask it what the specific statistics were on front impact, side impact, you know, um, rear impact, all that stuff. And, and really, you know, narrow it down. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I know it's kind of deviating from the topic, but it really, it does benefit uh, in, medicine as well so um it's interesting that people wanted to test this and uh you know it's it's certainly like um leading to a lot of concerns and uh you know one of these things the article mentions here is it says despite the promising results uh experts war warn that relying solely on ai for medical advice may not be ideal further research is needed to understand the full implications and limitations of ai and healthcare settings i don't think anybody's just gonna lean on artificial intelligence for healthcare you know yeah um, and that's the in interesting thing that we see here so many people are concerned oh ai is gonna take my jobs you know mm -hmm. whatever that job is i mean i've seen it from musicians to teachers to writers to um uh people on assembly line, you know, um, whether or not that's true remains to be seen, but doctors are not going to, they're safe, <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Because there's, there's something very different um, when it comes to like actual diagnoses uh, that you, you can't get, you can get close to with chat GPT, but you can't, you can't get that close unless, that's, you know, unless we're way farther ahead, of course. Mm -hmm. Well, and even then, however long that takes to get to this uh, place that you're imagining, 
Um, you know, I mean, even then, it's absolutely one of those industries that deserves a partnership with AI. You know, mm-hmm. it would be benefit so well to partner with AI to provide better medical care um, for people. You know, yeah, yeah, and exactly. I think that there are so many aspects of that that could benefit the healthcare industry. You know, yeah, yeah, that's true. You know, as long as the models are trained properly, because I guess another thing that I just now thought of um, that could be for like nefarious usage is um... nefarious. Ooh, such an underused word, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um yeah, one of the, the thought processes that I had was, you know, if because most of these AI models are having to be trained on some sort of data set or data set or whatever like that, the fear amongst me, and then this may be more tinfoil y hat, but is you could have insurance companies, right, training their AIs off of data that is more stricter to their guidance uh, when it comes to diagnoses and what they can treat and what won't be, tra- uh, what can and can't be treated, what is and isn't covered um, to where you have these doctors now following the, the guidance from the, these insurance company chatbots or insurance company AIs that are saying like, well, technically the symptoms are this and this and this, but we only do this, so I'm only going to output the the answer of this is what you're going to do, or this is what we're insure, and this is the only thing that, um, or this is what someone's actually going to have issues with. Man, that's super dystopian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, you know, I think my argument against that would be, and just from the hopeful side of things, if we all have access to resources like Chat GPT, then you wouldn't be able to. Um, pull the blanket over our heads, you know. True. What you would be able to do is maybe just openly screw us over, <laughs> you know. But, but I, I think it would be hard to pull the wool over somebody's eyes. Um, again, that I, I hope that's the case. Yeah. Um, but yeah, actually, and I want to go back to this for a second. Um, really, as Kind of my last question. Um, so this world that you're imagining where, you know, AI is advanced enough to replace doctors. How would that work? What do you think that would look like? That's a good question. Um, I think it would look too different from the model that we have currently. I think, well, honestly, I could actually see it to where if we're going like super far in the future, right? I could see it to where we now have AIs being trained off of our own baseline data set, right? As well as the data set that they have for like just typical diseases, you know, issues or whatever like that, that can happen to the human body or whatever. Um, So to be more specific, I can easily see it as us being have an AI that kind of grows with us, like almost an implanted AI that would be trained off of our understanding, like what our body norms are. Right. And then it also has a data set of whatever that could be ailing us or whatever like that. And so whenever we start feeling a certain way, instead of going to a doctor, right, we just look at like a thingy and, and like wrist watch or something similar to that. Right. And then you uh, it says, hey, we notice you have this, this and this going on. You most likely have this. It'd be crazy. Yeah, it'd be crazy. It really would. And then, you know, you could you could even pop up and pharmacy thing or whatever like that and say, hey, take this, this and this and your symptoms will go away this way and it'll consistently monitor. And then it'll give you like an alert to where it'll say, hey. I see this treatment's not working. Let's move on to this other part, which should work this, this, and this. These are the side effects. Uh, We're going to use this to mitigate the side effects and, you know, going through there. I could see something like that, right? We already have uh, very, 
pretty we we were getting more and more robust health monitoring equipment right you can get it all in like a wristwatch or whatever like that yeah. um and it's very it's getting more and more robust to a point to where i could easily see it getting to a point where you can it can like really really deep diagnose stuff um in in real time and then if you have ai processing all that data you can get really cool results yeah yeah definitely yeah that's a good point um i always think back to star trek uh where they have the little handheld device that's able to scan a multitude of things and they can heal a multitude of things just by the different waves that it sends out um from it and they also i i do remember they could prescribe pills that was just like one pill and you took it one time then you were completely better <laughs> you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah yeah there there's so many advances to be made in the medical field and i think ai is one of them so yeah i think we had a good discussion on this one man i'm glad that we did um did you have anything else you wanted to add no no i um you know, I I guess the only thing I did want to add really is just I, I I love to continue to iterate this, and I feel like it's something that a lot of people forget is that the what we see now is the worst it will ever be. You know, it's just going to get exponentially better. I mean, we've already seen it within the past four months, I guess, what four or five months really. Talk about um, it. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's kind of the sky is the limit. It'll just continuously get better and better and better. And then we're just going to see all sorts of things. So it's kind of crazy to see what jobs will be supplemented by AI. You know, the yeah. medical field is one of those where we didn't actually think we would get to. And here it is. We're already starting to see more strides in it than what we would have first imagined. Right. Exactly. Uh, and simple supplemented uh, being the key word in there, man. So, mm-hmm. um, well, I think we had a good discussion on this. Uh, appreciate you all uh, joining us on a late night uh, live stream. So um, thank you again so much uh, for your listening. And uh, remember that we go live every Thursday night on our Facebook and our YouTube page. And if you want to support us monetarily, check out our shop. It's all linked down below. And while you're uh, scrolling around, subscribe if you like us. Uh, it'll really help us out as well. So with all that said, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for watching. And we'll catch up with you next week.